Do you think space exploration, colonizing space, is a physics or an engineering problem? What would you say? Yeah, I think it's fundamentally an engineering problem if we're not trying to do things like build wormholes the way they did, say, an interstellar to get to a different place or trying to travel near the speed of light so that we would actually be able to traverse interstellar distances. I mean, without that, our colonization will happen at a very, very slow rate, right? Um, but one of the beauties of, of relativity is if you do travel near the speed of light, you you can actually go arbitrarily far in a human lifetime. People say, how's that possible? You can't go billions of light years. Well, you can actually, because as you can do the speed of light, the way in which space and time change allows you to go in principle arbitrarily far. That's, that's very exciting. But if we put that physics side of the issue and the manipulation of space and time to the side, yeah, I think it's a deep engineering problem. You know, how do you terraform other planets? I mean, uh, how do you go beyond our local neighborhood, say, without, you know, using the ideas of relativity. So I think it's all quite exciting. And I think the ideas, you know, using solar sails that, you know, people have developed and, uh, you know, trying to take that first step to Mars, I think that's a, a vital and valuable step to take. But yeah, I think these are fundamentally engineering challenges. Or extending the human lifespan through biology research or uh, maybe reducing what it means to be a human being into information and uploading certain parts yep. of it. Maybe not all the full resolution of a human life, but maybe the essential things uh, like the DNA and be able to reconstruct that human being. Yep. But, you know, I have to ask about Mars, uh, you know, do you, do you find the, the dream of humans stepping on Mars, stepping foot first, but also colonizing Mars? Um, one that's worth us fighting for? Yeah, hugely so. I mean, I think what we have long been, not always in the best way, is a species of explorers in the literal sense of traveling from one part of the world to another or in the more metaphorical sense of trying to travel through our minds to the quantum realm or back to the Big Bang or to the center of black holes. So I think that's fundamentally part of of the human spirit. So I do think that's a vital part of our heritage brought forward into its next incarnation. That's who we are. Do you think there'll be a, a day in the future where a human being is born on Mars and has to learn about his or her human origins on Earth? Like they'll have to read yeah. in a book yeah, I don't think it'll be a book at that stage. It'll probably just be uploaded into the head or something or, you know, imprinted into the DNA and then they just sort of sense it. But yeah, I think there's, there's well, look, the, the issue you raised before is the vital one. Is it the case that any sufficiently advanced civilization destroys itself? Is that sort of a, a commonplace quality? I mean, that's the other potential answer to the Fermi paradox. Uh, why aren't they here? Because by the time they got to the technological development where they could travel here, they blew themselves up. They destroyed themselves, yeah. and that's a you know an you know an unfortunate but you know not a hard to imagine possibility based on things that have happened here on planet Earth. But but putting that to the side, I think it um, you know that's the big obstacle. But putting that to the side, we will resolve the engineering challenges. And and you know I should I should probably. Um, modify my answer from before. When you said, is it engineering or physics? It's really both, right? So so we will surmount the engineering challenges and that will then make the physics challenges relevant. Mm. It'll make it relevant to figure out how to travel near the speed of light. It'll make it relevant to learn how to manipulate the shape of, of space-time and so forth. So, so I think it's a multi-stage process where it is engineering and ultimately physics. And if we stick around long enough, those are the kinds of challenges I think that we're ultimately gonna surmount. And on the physics side, it's figuring out how to harness energy enough to travel outside the solar system, which seems like a heck of a difficult journey. But even Mars itself, I've, um, I don't know, maybe because I, I was born in the Soviet Union and was um, born with the, the, you know, looking up at the stars and that dream of like the highest of human achievement is ability to fly out there to, to you know, to join the stars. 
I, I really like the idea of, of going to Mars of and not just stepping foot on Mars. And, and it wasn't until maybe um misinformed, but for me personally, uh, it wasn't until Elon Musk started talking about the colonization of Mars did I realize like we, we humans can actually do that. Mm. And the first of all, the importance of somebody saying that we can do these seemingly impossible things is uh, immeasurable because uh, you know the fact that he he placed that into my mind and into the minds of millions of others, maybe hundreds of millions, maybe billions of others, young kids today. I mean that that's going to make it a reality. I for some reason am deeply excited, um, even though my work is in AI that echoes all of this. I'm excited by the idea that somebody would be born, as we were saying, on Mars and sort of look up and be able to see with a telescope Earth and say, that's where I, I came from. I, I don't know, that that idea scale to other planets, to other solar systems, Yeah, that's really exciting. And hugely exciting. I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, the vital thing is to dream. <laughs> right. I, I mean, and it, it sounds hackneyed, but it is so important for for young kids, for the next generation to to think about the things that are seemingly impossible. I mean, that's what makes them possible. And this is one which is concrete enough. I mean, this is something that's going to happen soon in terms of actually going to Mars and then the next step of establishing some presence some semi-permanent or permanent presence. This is this is not something that's going to wait to the 25th century. I mean, this is something that's going to happen relatively soon. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it could well be in your lifetime, unlikely mine, but possibly in your lifetime that that kid will be born and 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 have the experience that that you describe. So, yeah, it's spectacularly exciting. 